Andy Review. Angry Andy. Hello and welcome to Angry Andy Reviews, and this is my review for The House of the Dragon, Episode 7. Now, I'm going to say it straight off the bat, this was a fantastic episode. Um, for me, this is exactly what I wanted. I wanted to see the interfamilial conflict coming to a head. I wanted to see them really getting into those uh, difficult conversations and seeing all the pieces on the board, you know, being put into place. Um, and we get that here in this episode. A lot happens in this episode. Um, I'm, I'm going to be I'm going to be careful not to spoil anything major, but there are several significant developments in this episode. Um, uh, not one of which, um, you know, the young, the young son of Alicent. Spoilers. I'm gonna I'm gonna go into some spoilers. Uh, nothing major though. But the young son of Alicent, um, you know, gets a dragon. Um, it's a very significant moment. Um, Rhaenyra and um, Damon um, come together. Um, and hatch a plan, and there is one heck of a a, a brilliant. I said hatch a plan, didn't I? Oh dear. Um, there is one heck of a brilliant scene, and I think this is where it sort of it's it succeeded for me. This episode in why it's so great, and the scene is all the major players come together um, after an incident. Um, involving the children um, of Rhaenyra and Alicent. And um, without sort of going into it, um, one of the children is injured. In fact, they're all injured, to be fair. They've all got their own injuries. Um, but one of them is more significantly injured, and Alicent loses her shit. And it's... For me, this scene is the perfect mix the perfect showcase of where all the characters are at what their their feelings are you know and what they're going to do um what they want to achieve um Alison completely blows her top and Rhaenyra remains quite quite stoic and quite sturdy throughout the entire thing and poor um Paddy Considine um <laughs> he just wants everybody to get along he just wants everybody to get along and it's it's quite sad really I think Paddy Considine's character is coming across as, you know, a very tragic king, a very tragic leader. He's he, all he's ever wanted is for his family um, and his wider family to be, you know, to be one unit, to be one happy unit, and he's not getting it. But instead of acknowledging that and targeting it, he's kind of not seeing the truth. Which plays a lot into this episode. He's not seeing the truth of everything that's happened. He's refusing to see the truth, which comes to blows with both, you know, his both his daughter and his queen. Um, and in this episode, he too gets to a point where he's left with no choice but to acknowledge certain things. But rather than be, you know, strong in terms of. A decision he kind of fluffs it um and that causes even more issues but he's dying he's clearly dying and in this sort of long death row that we've seen throughout the entire season all he's wanted is for his family to come together and it's very tragic i think i think it's very it's an interesting an interesting structure for a character in the Game of Thrones universe. We don't really we've not really seen sort of a tragic figure. Um everyone's been either evil or you know conceited or just plain ignorant of you know the game. 
Um, Paddy Constantine's character is is the very first sort of tragic figure. Um, I think in this sh- in 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 this universe, for me anyway, because that's all he wants. He just wants a family that works, a family that comes together and rules, and continues to rule for a huge dynasty. And he's just not going to get it. Um, and this this whole sequence at the end, and when I say it features everybody, and everybody's in it, everybody, all all the major characters are there, and the sort of unsubtly. The unsubtleness of <laughs> of the episode, you see who picks what side, and then who's unfortunately left in the middle. It's very obvious. It's, um, but that's not a detriment to it because the dialogue is snappy. It's it's to the point. This episode is really well written for each and every single character. Every single character has a moment where. Something happens. Even the kids, even the even the young child actors of you know Rhaenyra's kids and Alicent's kids, they all have something, something poignant, pinpoint exactly. You know what's going to influence them as they get older, um, and it, it works. It really works. There are several moments when you think, oh shit, something's going to happen, and then something else happens. Somebody says something, and that sparks a reaction from someone else, and you're like. Oh, 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 you know, where are we going? Who's doing what? Who who wants what? And that's interesting for me. It is one big giant chessboard. All the players are in position and eventually somebody is going to be taken out. And <clears throat> we almost get that as well. We almost get that when it comes towards the end. Um, but I'm not going to spoil it because it's an interesting cliffhanger. Overall, I am going to give this episode a 10 out of 10, purely because of the quality of the writing, purely because of how well acted it is. Um, So yeah, and I am going to leave that review there, because I think this episode is one that you need to watch yourself. Most definitely. And come up with your own sort of theories and thoughts. There's no major action in this. Not at all. It's all family politics. And I love it. So, I'm going to leave that there. 10 out of 10. Who would have thought? Bye-bye.